right, so if we can all take our seats, and I think we have, I would like to officially welcome you to Gray Academy of Jewish Education's Convocation 2020. I want to welcome all of our guests who are here in person for the first half of our convocation. We will be welcoming a new set of guests in the second half. And I also want to welcome all of our guests watching live from what I understand is all over the world. And so if you are watching live to all of our guests, and I'll probably repeat this in case we have some latecomers, we hope you send us a little message in the chat feature just to wish our class Mazel Tov. So a few housekeeping items before we begin. Um, once you send all of your messages, we're going to ask you to make sure that your devices are silenced. In order to come together today, we are following all of Manitoba's public health guidelines. And as such, we are seated in this very unique way so that you are in household groupings. We do have washrooms inside and they are available to you should you need. Also, we have a hydration station at the back. We want to keep you hydrated throughout. Um, we ask you to please not move your seats during the ceremony. Um, and also that when we exit, there's going to be a certain set of instructions so that we can make sure the second group can arrive somewhat following your departure. If you are finding it hot outside, we do have our wellness room inside, which will have the live feed going should you need to cool off. We wanted to be prepared for all scenarios. I want to welcome our official photographer, Robin Shapiro, who has been taking pictures from this morning on and has the challenge of doing so with a bit of distance. And also our director of marketing and communications, Andrea Ritter, who's going to be doing a little bit of social media posting throughout and also taking photos. When your child is honored, we will allow one family member to be able to come into this beautiful orange hula hoop designated for you to take a photo, but rest assured we have our official photographer who will be taking at least three photos to make sure to get a good one without blinking um, so that everybody has a photo. So with that, I don't want to go any further until our most honored guests are here. I want to thank Shayla Fink, who is on keyboard today with us, and we will begin with our processional of the graduating class of 2020. Cue the music. Oh, just need a little power on the keyboard. <laughs> is loud. official welcome to the graduating class of 2020. I have to say we were all about business until they walked in. That got me a bit emotional. Welcome to our graduates. This celebration is for you. And this one is certainly unique. All Gray Academy graduates and graduation ceremonies are always special. 
this one has a particular uniqueness in that we are under the sky. We've been Grey Academy, we've been Grey Away, we're now Grey Academy under the sky. And I think there's something beautiful in that we were able to make it to this point together, that we were able to be together, to celebrate our graduates, to be together under the sky. And it harkens back to the first day of Pesach break. We were eight days into being virtual and a post by Mrs. Botch for her grade nine science class in the evening to look up in the sky to watch a very specific phenomena that was happening that evening. And Mrs. Botch, who's here tonight, wrote, even though we are separated, we are all together under the same sky. And there's something beautiful about our graduates, the time we spent with them in what was absolutely not how they envisioned ending their graduation year. But these last few months, each of you walked through these months with sheer grace, with gratitude, with resiliency, and with an amazing amount of patience to hold off until it was safe for us to be together. And here we are today. So I thank you all for being here. I want to thank Mrs. White for giving me the honor and privilege to lead our convocation. This is certainly a special moment and a chance for us to recognize all of our graduates. When we turn to the second half, we hope that you continue watching live or at least watch the recording later to have a chance to hear about each and every one of our graduates. To set the tone, we are going to invite Hannah Garber and Maya Polavoy, and your prayers are under your seats, to come up for your prayers. You're gonna be given a mic, and I'm just gonna move the stand, you guys will hold your mic. Elohenu velohe abatenu vimatenu, anachnun dim al saps <laughs> bufacha the shabachain. Tenchenu la tova vela bracha, la sason vela simcha, la fermasa vela kalkala, vela yeshua vela etgal, la ipuk vela mechama, tencha linsoa et hanishiut shabano, ten lano et yeholot la chazek et atzmenu, mishpachtenu, la chavarenu, vela saret et ki helatenu bekavod. Tir el lano drachim le tikun olam. Tinchenu la chaim vela shalom. Shanakir Bhasuruniot ten lano Koachlit Modad Im Shifotenu Lemadnu Tat Lusneach Latmenu Velacharim Elohenu Atali Madatao Tanu Lakir et Hilufe Hazman Ten Lanu Lakir Ba Mad Hazen Kishaat Kosher La Riach et Hainu Tavot Kufa Hazot Alenu Val Kol Am Bet Israel Tova Velabraha Venomar Amen. Our God and God of our fathers and mothers, we are at the threshold of a new period in our lives. Direct us towards goodness and blessing, towards gladness and joy, towards livelihood and sustenance, towards liberation and challenge, towards patience and consolation. Direct us to find the humanity within us. Give us the capability to support ourselves, our families, and our friends, and to serve our community in dignity. Show us ways to tikkun olam. Direct us towards life and peace, that we may be aware of our shortcomings. Give us strength to struggle with our aspirations. Teach us how to forgive ourselves and others. Our God, you have taught us to be aware of the changes in time. Let us regard this moment as an opportunity to elevate our lives. May this period come to us and your entire people Israel for goodness and for blessing. And let us say, Amen. <laughs> to set the tone further, I would like to invite our Judaic Studies Advisor, Dr. Ashrafi, to share her Dvar Torah.
it works. It's good to see all of you here. So let's dive right into it. Why do bad things happen to good people? Why is it that after 12 to 15 years of studying hard at school and looking forward to a well-deserved graduation, COVID hits, throws the country into lockdown and your plans out the window? What does Judaism have to say about life's curveballs and the best way of dealing with them? First, here is the explanation with which the rabbis do not agree. In the Talmud, Rabbi Yochanan states that if a person is overcome by a sudden illness or hardship, he should accept it as yesurim shel ahava, or punishment out of love. God is using the suffering to teach you something. Well, three pages down, Rabbi Yochanan becomes sick himself, and his students ask, how do you feel? I do not like the suffering, nor the lesson it is supposed to teach, he answers. Well, at least he's honest. So here is why that theory does not work. Curveballs are random. Why should you, the class of 2020, need to learn a lesson? And what about the previous classes? Why should this person experience illness and that person not? The second rabbinic explanation focuses on the randomness of suffering. If all our actions were always followed by their just reward, no exceptions, what would that mean? Most of us would quickly learn that if we do good things, we receive good in return. Our lives will become a balanced accounting book, ensure that you always have more credit than debit. But if there is randomness in the system, we cannot always be certain of the result of our actions. If we are suddenly hit by something that we could not possibly have seen coming or could have prevented, by something that overturns all our plans, then the question becomes, how are we going to respond to the challenge that hit us? If we get thrown a curveball, it is okay to feel upset because it does, because it hurts. It is really okay. Would we keep doing good even if we may not get the result we want? Or should we do good because it is the right thing to do? Judaism acknowledges that the randomness of curveballs is no easy matter at all but it teaches us to focus on our choice of response. We can keep doing the right thing because it is the right thing to do. So, if COVID prevents us from having a regular convocation ceremony, we'll organize a different one, but we will have a convocation ceremony. And Mrs. White will figure out that dinner and dance too. Look at Israel. We learned to grow watermelons in the desert, revive the language, and are now the second country with the most startups on the NASDAQ in New York. And all this while under constant threats from our enemies. Despite the curveballs, you will continue to do good. You will go after your dreams because that is the right thing to do. That is one of the values that you learned at Gray Academy. I want to congratulate all of you with a huge Mazal Tov. I wish you and your families lots of bracha and hetzlacha and kol tuv. All the best. Thank you. Thank you. As you can see, we've got a little bit of choreography with our uh, microphones and many different microphones. And I want to thank the sound guy and uh, Dr. Ashrafi. If I can have my notes back, <laughs> I can continue. Thank you. <laughs> Perfect. Thank you. Okay, I still seem to be missing my notes. So if somebody has my notes, Dr. Shafi, are you sure you don't? Any of our prayers? <laughs> okay. There we go. Okay. So now is the time to welcome some special guests here this morning. Representing the Winnipeg Board of Jewish Education, the board that has been overseeing Jewish education in our community for the past almost 40 years. We're getting close to celebrating 40 years uh, since 1980, so we're declaring 2021 as the celebration of our 40 years. I would like to welcome Sean Shore, President. Please stand and be noted who is here representing the board. And to any of our board members who may be watching live, we thank you. Um, it is our board that supports the continuity and future of Jewish education in our community. And I want to thank Sean for He's just about to conclude five years of dedication to the Winnipeg Board of Jewish Education this November. I want to thank him for that dedication and also let you know that there is a letter inside the program from him 
uh, to you, to all of our guests. Also here today representing the Jewish Federation of Winnipeg is past president, Laurel Malkin. Laurel, if you can stand so we can welcome you officially. <laughs> Laurel is here representing the Federation. And as we continue to note in so much of our messaging, the gratitude to the contributions we receive through the community and the combined Jewish appeal with the allocation allows us to continue to make sure that Jewish day school education is affordable and accessible, and we are continuously grateful to the Federation. And we thank you, Laurel, for representing the giant board and um, for being here with us. In your program, uh, you will find a letter from Joel Laser, uh, the current president, and I hope you will take a chance later on to read that. Someone uh, out there live is gonna be watching from the Jewish Foundation of Manitoba with where our endowment is housed. Uh, the Gray Academy Endowment, our debating endowment, and so many of our awards. Uh, we don't have anyone here live with us today, but you will find a letter in your program from the current president, Richard Yaffe, <clears throat> on behalf of the Jewish Foundation of Manitoba. So we thank the Jewish Foundation for their contributions to our ceremony. Generally at our convocation, we have hundreds of guests. We have many people who are our special guests who are with us because they are connected to an award, they establish an award, they give out the award. Uh, but this year is unique and they were not able to be with us in person. Uh, we have invited all of them to watch live and to those of you who are watching live, and I do know we have one or two people during our first and second um, time together that are here connected to awards and we do thank you for being here. It is because of those presenters and because of those individuals and families that we have so many awards in which to honor our graduates. I would like to now honor our parents, and if you are a parent of a graduate, if you could please stand. As you stand and are honored, I want to thank you. I want to thank you for choosing Gray Academy for your children. I want to thank you for your partnership, whether your partnership has spanned 14 years, 15 years, or maybe seven. We are partners with our families and with our parents, and I don't think that any time other than these last few months was that even clearer um, to all of us. And I want to thank you all, and I want to wish you all Mazel Tov, and for your patience along the journey for waiting until July 12th to celebrate the graduating class. So thank you to our parents. And unfortunately, we couldn't have all of our staff and our teachers here, but we have many. So if you're wearing two hats, uh, or if you are an educator or a staff member, if you could please stand. I would like all of our teachers to please stand. I'm watching, Mr. Kagan, that's you too, I'm watching. <laughs> um, yes, that's you. Each and every day, it is the work of our teachers and our staff that contribute to the experience that our students have at Gray Academy. And I also wanna point out these last few months, the hard work and dedication for being committed to our core values of community connectivity and taking care of our students over the last number of months. And we're glad to have so many of you here present. And to all of you watching live, we thank you with the deepest of gratitude. So with that, I get to turn the mic over to Mrs. White. And I want to uh, remark and thank her before she comes up because we are here because of all of the thousands of steps and the commitment that she had even during the pandemic when we were in gray away to make sure each and everything that we planned in the normal time was planned. I can tell you <laughs> this tent is up, the microphones are here and all of the details that lead up to today is because of Mrs. White's commitment to our graduates. I'll say more later on and I'm gonna take my notes with me this time. I've learned my lesson. So Mrs. White, I will flip my microphone and allow you COVID protocols. All right. <clears throat> Isn't this beautiful? Thank you. I did, thank you. This is awesome. I did send a text to see if we get the sun dialed down just a smidge for those of you on the edges, I'm not sure. Uh, it's, it will happen in time, but we try to 
provide as much shade as we could, a little bit of a breeze. Um, this is a very special graduation for a very special group of grads. So the principal speech. I'm up here thinking that whatever I need to say needs to be a little bit insightful, maybe a little bit humorous. Um, it's standard practice to start with a catchy quote and to build your speech around that catchy quote. Um, I don't think I'm going to follow that structure this year. Nothing this year followed a typical structure. I'm sure that you would agree it's been an intense couple of months, but we are together today, finally. The class of 2020 made it very clear that it was important for them to have a celebration live where they could have family members and their peers beside them. When we're preparing for graduation, Staff and special guests are divided into groups and they look at the award applications and they utilize rubrics uh, to allocate certain awards. But there are a number of awards that are done a bit differently. And those awards are done, the staff will sit all together and the staff will share anecdotes and stories about each and every graduate and this year, I wish I could have recorded those conversations for you. Because what I heard were a lot of staff going, oh, really? Oh, I didn't know that, as they were learning so much about this grad class. What came out loud and clear from these conversations is that you're not a group that shouts from the rooftops. You're not a group that finds a cause and leads it from the front. Your heart is much more subtle and meaningful. Even when you wrote about yourselves in your bios, I was surprised at how much was missing. You want to know what was missing? Some awards, some different initiatives that they've done or ways that they've helped out their peers. But that's who they are. How they've affected others is very subtle and genuine. I want everybody in here to know about you. I want you also to know that we see you. We see you when you're reaching out to the younger students in the halls or in 204, making them feel special. We see you when you're saying hello to that student in the hall who is alone. We see you asking for help when a friend needs help. We see you choosing positive choices and even when those positive choices are not necessarily the easy ones. We see you supporting one another even when you've been hurt You've still been there for somebody else. We see you taking a stand for what's right. We see you being proud of your uniqueness and your individuality, which in turn makes you the best role models for our younger students in the school. There is no doubt in my mind that you will blaze a path that is your own, no one else's, your own. You are all very strong. You have a strong sense of self. You know who you are. You are strong in your convictions. And you have a big heart. We are so very proud of each and every one of you. Congratulations. I would like to take a moment for a few thank yous. First, to some of our parent volunteers. To Joan Marks for planning the progressive dinner down to the last details. All that was left to do was hit play. To Hadass Eviatar, who was my right hand as we started our fundraising. And every few weeks I would get an email from Hadass asking if there's any way that she could lend a hand. 
Susan Buckwald, who started planning for our grad Shabbat and convocation. Rachel Margulis, who helped with some of the festivities for today's event. Thank you. A huge shout out to our biography writers, Ron Vanderhoeft, Heidi Crowley, Lindsay, Lindsay Leipzig, Nicole Bosch, and Andrew Kaplan. And finally, today would not have happened without the countless hours of Lori Binder and Joyce Kerr. It is mind blowing how much they get accomplished within a day. We thank you for ensuring that today was going to be special for everybody. Thank you, Tracy. Getting teary. This is getting exciting. OK. We get to turn our attention to the voices of our students through the valedictory addresses. And each year at Gray Academy, we have a valedictorian selection process. And I think about it was maybe seven or eight years ago that we changed our process to allow all students to come forward, to put themselves um, forward to say they were interested. But this process includes a selection with staff and with peers. So I'm gonna invite Jenna Buckwald and Mitchell Margulis to get ready with their microphones. We're gonna start with Jenna, just to come up because we get to get our microphones ready. Um, we are always honored to be able to have a valedictorian address in Hebrew, and that will be followed by Mitchell Margulis in English. I'm not gonna come up between them. Um, I look forward to hearing their words in celebration of their peers and the graduating class of 2020. So we're gonna start with our Hebrew valedictorian, Jenna, once I come down, and that will be followed by Mitchell. And also to let you all know, and everybody watching live, we will be doing this twice, so that our guests who come in the second half are able to also hear the valedictorian speeches authentically in person. Gavarit Binder, Dr. Ashrafi, Gavarit White, Hamora Joyce, Morim, Mishpachot, Vichaverim. Ruchim Habaim, Leteka Siyum, Shalkita Al Paim Beasrim. Kshani Kotevet Edhana Om Hazeh, Aniloyo Dat Imikraze, Mul Auditorium, Amus Bakol, Beneha Mishpacha, Vichaverim Shalanu, Kizaboku Lam Yoshvim, Bemerchak, Shalshisha Metarim Zemaze, O Stam Koreditze, Bakol Ram Bizum. Shanifnas knew the Beit Hasefer by September, Lashanat Halimudim, Haafrana, Shalanu Betichon, Loyachal knew the Damien, Shalona Kabel, Edahiz Damnut, La Soda at Mishak Hasport Hacharon Shalanu, at Festival Ashirim Hacharon Shalanu, at Seder Hapesach Hacharon Shalanu, the Etamine Haafranim, Lachagi Gotatifon. Tochniot, Covid nineteen, Hasior Hakol, the Hayenu Trichim Le Kabel, Shahal Lamisha Ne Lenetza. The Mesha Hachodashim Haafranim, Avarno Milhis Dakel, Al Kirot, Beit Has Shefer, Shahid Raganu Kol Kachlirot, Bemala, Arbaasre Hashanim Haafranot, Lilhis Dakel, Al Kirot, Cheder Hashena Shalanu Bimkom. Achbeota, Derek Shuba, Grey Academy, Tamid Haita Sham Avarenu, Hemshu Patslichu, the Histagel Kol Kach Meher, Belev Sharlanu Lehaslim, Ed Chachenu Haafranim, Betsora Kala, the Chalka Kakal Haafshar. Lemarenu Vilaharenu Ha Nehedirim. Lo hainu kan hayom bli kol havadah hakasha hamsirat vahasalvanut shalechem. Toda mikol halev shavatama tanu l'shalev hahashuv hazeh b'chayinu. Grey Academy tamid hayta yoter misdam beit sefer avarinu. Zo tamid hayta mishpacha. Hatsevet hu be'emet echad mesogo. Lo rak shayata hamarim shalanu 
אלא שאתה גם המנטורים והחברים שלנו. תודה שהשמעתם תמיד שעות נוספות שעזרו לנו בכל מה שאנחנו צריכים ועל כך שהשקעתם בנו כל כך. תודה שהייתם תמיד שם בשבילנו ודאגתם לנו גם בחיי בית הספר ומחוץ. לא היינו יכולים לעשות את זה בלעדיכם. באיזה בית ספר אחר היו המורים קנים שלושים לכל הכיתה, זורקים מסיבת פוטלק ללא סיבה, יוצאים לארוחת צהריים לקנות לכולם מתנה בהתאמה אישית, מבקשים מכם לשיר שיר שכתבתם למחנה מקהלה, או מזמינים את המשלחת לבית שלהם לצפות ברגעים נבחרים מהטיול שלכם. כל יום היו זיכרונות חדשים כמו אלו, שאני יודעת שהכיתה שלנו לעולם לא תשכח, ותמיד תהיה אסירי תודה עליהם. אנו כל כך אסירי תודה על כל מה שבית הספר הזה נתן לנו. הודות לחוויות שלנו בריטריטים ושבתונים, יש לנו הערכה חזקה לתפילה, ויש לנו את היכולת להיפלל עם כוונה בסידור, לקרוא מהתורה ולהוביל טקסים שונים. למדנו בתרופות על מורשתנו, שושנו ולקחים מהעבר, דרך לימוד ההיסטוריה היהודית והשואה. יש לנו הבנה ידי הטוב של עברית, ושמענו נועים ומובילי קהילה שונים. P2G הציע לנו את ההזדמנות לפתח אהבה וחיבור חזק לישראל, ולאפשר לנו ליצור זיכרונות וחברתיות מתמשכות. אנו יודעים שתמיד נעשה את זה, הערכים שלמנו איתנו לשלב הבא בחיינו. כשאני עומדת כאן ומייצגת את הכיתה של 2020, תמיד נזכור את החשיבות של שמירה על המסורת היהודיות שלנו. אמנם למיסה שלנו בגרי אקדמי היו תגמולים ואתרגים, וכל זאת הפכנו למנהיגים ומודילים לחיקוי בעתיד. אני יודעת שנמשיך לשב בחיינו את הערכים והמסורת הללו. למרות שבלתי חלק ניכר מחיי בלימודים מחוץ לתוכניות הרגילה, כמו בריקוד ובתיאטרון מוזיקלי מחוץ לבית הספר, אני אסירי תודה על כל ההזדמנויות הנוספות שהעניק לי בית הספר. החל מהתפקידים הראשיים במחזות זמר של בית הספר ועד לכיתה ובעצוע של שירים מקוריים משלי לכל פסטיבלי השירים, נהניתי מאוד להיות מסוגלת להשתתף באופן פעיל כל כך בתוכניות בית הספר האלה. זה באמת שיפר את חוויות הגרי אקדמי שלי ונתן לי כל כך הרבה זיכרונות של עולם לא ישכח. לכל חבר'ה כיתתני יודני שנצטער להיפרד אחד מהשני בשלב מסוים לפני שנלך בדרכינו הנפרדות, אך מי היה מאמן שנעשה זאת במרץ. תמיד היינו כיתה עם הרבה חוויות ממקור ראשון. הראשונה היא להיות שלוש כיתות בסודי, הראשונה ללבוש תלבוש של אחידה מאז כיתה א', וכעת אנו מוכירים ככיתה עם חוויות הסיום הייחודית ביותר אי פעם. למרות כל המכישולים והשינויים העומדים בפנינו, איננו מתכוונים לתת לכך להרתיע אותנו. אנחנו, הכיתה של 2020 חזקים, ואז רק חיזק אותנו. העולם עשוי להשתנות לנצח, אך עתידנו עדיין מואר, ואנחנו ללא ספק עדיין נשיג את המטרות שלנו, ונהיה מנהיגים עתידים. עשינו את זה. אני מאחלת לכולם מזל טוב ביוזמתכם העתידיות. תודה. Can everybody hear me? Cool. Thank you to everyone who is joining us here today. Thank you to Ms. Binder, Mrs. White, the administration, and everyone who helped make today possible. I know I speak for everyone when I say how much we appreciate being able to do this. I feel like it was just yesterday that a young boy walked through the elementary doors with a kippa on his head and a bag full of dreams. Some of those dreams included playing basketball at Duke University, and some of those dreams never came to fruition. Little did he know the level of growth he would experience between those walls and the countless relationships he would form along the way. That boy was me. 
Hello everyone. My name is Mitchell Margulis and I was given the opportunity to address the Gray Academy class of 2020. And standing here today, I can't help but feel the same emotions I felt in junior kindergarten, having never gone to school before. Nervousness, severe sweating, and mild nausea. I want to make it clear that these are symptoms of stage fright and there is nothing to worry about. While writing this speech, I have struggled to put our high school career into words. There are so many people and moments that have allowed us to reach this day. If Miss Bosch and Mr. Hamill never told me to take math seriously, who knows if I would have had the marks to even be considered for this position. But what I have been doing is thinking about the Gray Academy class of 2020, a cohort of fearless young adults ready to take on whatever the world has to offer, unless that is a global pandemic, of course. While this isn't how we imagined it, we are so glad to be here with everyone that the province has allowed. To those joining us via the World Wide Web, we salute you in these times of uncertainty. We love you and can't wait to celebrate in person. Our journey at Gray Academy has gone faster than any of us could have imagined. Some of us started going to school here from the very beginning. Some of us joined later on, and some even left and came back. But all 23 of us share something unique, our love for Gray Academy. One of my fondest memories of the Academy was our imaginary trip to Israel in grade three. It felt like a never ending journey of fun due to the fact that we technically have never returned. And because international travel is prohibited, we have decided as a graduating class to partake on an imaginary grad trip, solving both the problems of cost and our parents' trust. But in all seriousness, Gray Academy has provided us with so much, especially when it comes to opportunity. No matter if you love sports, art, debating, technology, or mama lotion, there is something for everyone. It's what our school does best. Gray Academy is a place where you can truly be yourself, and it's something that is unique to our school. And we have a pool. You see, throughout my extensive preparation for this speech, I found a pattern. Almost every valedictorian made some sort of comparison to their grade. So as an exercise, I decided to relate every example I heard to the Gray Academy class of 2020 just to see if anything would click. The first speech I heard compared their graduating class to the film High School Musical. She compared her classmates to characters in the movie and concluded that together they form a beautiful harmonious choir. This may have been true of her graduating class, but with the exception of Jenna Buckwald and Nicola Renzen, our grade is entirely devoid of musical ability. The next speech I heard made a comparison to a book. He talked about how his classmates are moving on to the next chapter in their lives and that at the end of the day, we move forward. But why read books when there are perfectly good summaries online? Overall, what I learned is that you can't compare the class of 2020 to anything. We are living in a time unlike any other. And despite what's going on in the world, I genuinely believe that we will come out of it stronger and closer than ever. Speaking of craziness, high school was quite the ride. I wouldn't say we matured, but we did become more self-aware of our immaturity. We learn that our schmoozers accounts are in fact not endless streams of money. And we learn that when we leave the lounge a literal garbage dump, mold begins to form. Unhealthy habits aside, we grew closer as a grade and created memories that will last a lifetime through Shabbatons, P2G, Case, and many more. But none of these programs would have ever been possible without the teachers who have helped us become the young learners we are today. For the hours of extra help and years of helping us understand not only the fundamental lessons of the class, but in life, we thank you. You are credited not only with our knowledge, but our character as well. Whether it's discussing fantasy football, reality shows, or the intro to living on a prayer, which is, oh, whoa, whoa, by the way, we appreciate everything you do for us. You have mentored and guided us through our biggest ups and downs, and most importantly, you cared for us. I'd also like to take a moment to thank the CEOs of SparkNotes, CliffNotes, PhotoMath, <laughs> Quizlet, and Khan Academy for helping us get through these last few years. You were there for us in times of need, and we are forever in your debt. While Googling what a great valedictorian speech sounds like, oftentimes it read, provide the graduates with wisdom. I think it's important for me to do this, because who doesn't want to hear wisdom from a young, inexperienced 18-year-old? But believe it or not, these past 18 years have taught me a few things. To the class of 2020, hey guys, we made it. I think it's fair to say that these past few months haven't been easy on everyone. And what I've ultimately learned is that growing up sucks. It really does. 
But over the next few years, it's what we'll do. Some of us will move away and some of us will stay right here. Regardless of that, I genuinely hope that we stay in touch and stay close. The Gray Academy experience is not bound by the physical campus, but by the unbreakable bonds that we share with both our peers, teachers, and community. I know for a fact that wherever life takes us, our school will remain by our side, and there will always be time with the boys. I think it's also, to under um, I think it's also important to understand um, that we should never stop fighting for what we believe is right, just like Max Kaplan's valiant effort in never wearing his uniform, to which Mr. Vanderhoof swiftly settled. I guess what I'm trying to say is that in life, do not conform to any expectations or boundaries. You don't have to be a lawyer, doctor, or corporate manager to be successful. Find that thing that makes you happy and double down. Today is the beginning of the rest of your life, which is why I have decided to drop out of university to pursue a career in magic. And for my first trick, I will be concluding the speech. There is no doubt that moving on from Gray Academy won't be easy. But with it, there will be countless memories and relationships formed. All I ask is that you remember where you came from. To quote the Disney film Up, enjoy the little things in life. For one day, you'll look back and realize that they were the big things. Thank you all for listening, and mazel tov to the Gray Academy class of 2020. Thank you, Jenna, and thank you, Mitchell, for those wonderful words. And if you didn't notice, in your program, there is a translation of the Hebrew speech, should you wish to read it if you weren't already watching uh, or reading along with them. I just want to remind the graduates that under your chair, there's a little bag so that you stay hydrated as well, as, and a fan if you want to cool yourself off. So please uh, help yourself to that so that you can be good for the next hour and a half, at least, that we're going to be together, not just with this group. So we're on to the diplomas and the awards. And I think what makes Gray Academy's graduation unique is that we have a chance to honor each and every graduate, not simply because they are receiving their diplomas, the Manitoba Education Diploma and the Gray Academy of Jewish Education Diploma, but because each and every one of the students, as both Jenna and Mitchell have remarked, have contributed, have grown, have uniqueness. And sh in a moment, Mrs. White is going to come up and we'll be reading those bios. What will happen with this diploma is each of our graduates, at least the first half up until Rudy Kissel, will officially become graduates and officially become alum. And so if you are an alum of Gray Academy or any of its founding schools, Joseph Linsky Collegiate, please rise so we can recognize our alum and so all of our graduates can see who they will be joining. So don't be shy, because I can see you. If you are an alum, please, please rise. OK. Wonderful. And once again, I want to thank all of the individuals that are attached to the many uh, awards, and in particular, the Jewish Federation of Winnipeg for the Jerry Kaufman Kehilo Award, the Jewish Foundation of Manitoba for housing our awards, uh, the Housing at Winnipeg Foundation, and the Winnipeg chapter, the Canadian Friends of Hebrew U, and the Winnipeg Board of Jewish Education. I also want to acknowledge this year we have one new award, the Gray Academy Leadership Award, and this award is awarded to a graduating student for leadership over high school in at least two or more areas. This morning, uh, we have one graduate who is not able to make it, but I want to note Nicole Aronson, and I would like to wish her mazel tov officially and, and have you join me to clap. Um, and now I would like to call up Mrs. White, and we will start with the diplomas. And a reminder to our grads, you're picking up your diploma here. Take off the sticky note for the photo, and you're coming up the stairs and going down the stairs. When your child is called up, and if you'd like to be the photographer of the family, there's a hula hoop to the left of Andrea. And uh, I think what is beautiful is to really celebrate all of the achievements and how special our graduates are. So every year, a number of teachers ask to have the privilege of coming up to read the grad bios, 
But as you can see, the uh, spritzing and the changing of the microphones and all of these pieces. So due to protocols, I get the privilege this year of reading all of the grad bios. So I'm very excited for this. We are going to begin with Jenna Buckwald. <laughs> Jenna's entire career as a student, from junior kindergarten to this day, has been within the walls of Gray Academy. Jenna has spent 15 years in this building and is proud to call herself a lifer. This morning, she was honored as the 2020 Hebrew valedictorian. Those of you that know Jenna know that music, singing, and dance are her passion. Throughout her years at Gray, she could be seen in every musical offered since she was in grade six. She played many lead roles, but remembers her role as Maisie in Susical, and You're a Good Man, Charlie Brown, where she played Sally as being the best experiences. Jenna loved participating in the annual song festival, and one of her fondest memories was when she sang with her P2G delegations. Jenna, who had never been to Israel before, recalls that P2G was a trip of a lifetime. She states, being part of the culture as a whole and making so many new friends was impactful. She continued on to be the cultural chair on student council for two years following the trip. Jenna participated in almost everything Gray Academy had to offer, including but not limited to student ambassadorship, math contest, student council, and the Shema Choir, and has been on the honor roll in both general and Judaic studies every year. In the fall, Jenna will attend the University of Manitoba Asper School of Business. She received an academic entrance scholarship through the university. Today, Jenna is the recipient of the Gray Academy of Jewish Education Silver Medal, Jim Carr Member of Parliament Award, Joseph Ezra J. Cohen Baal Kriya Award, Leslie Ann Levy Corey Memorial Award, Naomi, Pans Naomi Polanski Community Leadership Award, Norman Marvin Satran Baal Midot Award, Excellence with Distinction in both General and Judaic Studies, Student Ambassador Recognition, and Lifer Recognition. Thank you. Okay, thank you. <laughs> Hannah Garber. Since entering Gray Academy, Hannah remembers with some guilt that she joined every library club in elementary to avoid going out for recess. In order to soothe her conscience, she still has every craft she made. She takes great care to act with integrity. Hannah is an enthusiastic sports fanatic and fierce competitor, participating in volleyball, ultimate, and her favorite, basketball, with her highlight being the grade eight zone championship. She was the varsity girls volleyball captain this year, recognizing her strong leadership abilities. These were also reflected in her leading role in BBYO over several years. She remembers case trips to Toronto and St. John as particular highlights. Hannah is a respected friend and confidant, recognized by several Menschlichkeit Awards, and she understands that her relationships have been the core of her experience at Gray. She will be entering sciences at U of M next year, and one day hopes to discover the perfect iced coffee recipe. Hannah is the recipient of the Carol Lesh Learning and Giving Award, the David Kaufman Award, the Philip and Miriam Maltz Award, the Paula and Rudy Lowenstein Award, the Michael Rosenberg Excellence in Female Varsity Basketball Award, Steinbach Credit Union Scholarship, Girls Varsity Volleyball Coaches Award. She received excellence with distinction in both general and Judaic studies and life recognition. Jordan Garber. Since junior kindergarten, Jordan believed that he would never accomplish anything greater than defeating Aaron to be king of recess football in grade six. That hasn't stopped him from trying. Jordan excels in golf, martial arts, basketball, and fitness training. He approaches his goals with determination and persistence, demonstrated by wearing shorts every day in high school. Jordan has a passion for basketball and has been part of three provincial championships. 
and likely a fourth, but remembers being the MVP of the final game in grade nine as a highlight. Another was this year's brush with fame when he almost made the final cut to be an A&W commercial. Along the way, he has been recognized as a mensch for volunteering with children and seniors and being a good friend. Jordan combines interests in country music, the search for alien influences, the quest for the perfect burger, and the meaning of life in that order. He will enter the Asper School of Business in the fall and aspires to be an entrepreneur. Jordan is the recipient of the Bernice Manishin Feintuck Peer Tutoring Scholarship, Victor and Linda Hamovich Memorial Scholarship, the Michael Rosenberg Excellence in Male Varsity Basketball Award, Golf Coaches Award, Excellence with Distinction in General Studies, Excellence in Judaic Studies, and Life for Recognition. <laughs> Maria Gershwang. <clears throat> when Maria came to Gray in grade seven, she immediately found that the art room was where she would make her home away from home. She has a fond memory of being the balloon thief in the hotel on the grade nine Washington trip. She is generous and has spent a lot of time volunteering with seniors at the Tuxedo Seniors Living Center. Maria is a private person who takes pride in her self-sufficiency. This year, she has asserted herself with growing confidence and ease. Her real focus is art, storytelling, and fashion. There are many examples of Maria's work on the school's walls. She has excelled in artistic expression at Gray, but also as a professional artist while working online on a variety of commissions. Maria will attend the Ontario College of Art and Design at the University of Toronto next year in, the draw in drawing and painting, digital painting, and expanded animation program. She looks forward to living independently, being a freelance artist, and having more cats. Maria is the recipient of the Benny Rubin Artistic Award, the Sylvia Silverberg Scholarship, and has excellence in both general and Judaic studies. Shira Holt. Shira began Gray Academy in Hamora Carroll's junior kindergarten class. She, has old, she had older brothers in the school and is the last Holt to graduate. Shira recalls reading Harry Potter with Hamora Chris when she began to find her passion and enjoyment of reading, especially fiction. Her passions are playing video games, watching anime, and art. In Shira's ethical will, at the very end, she quotes Henry James, who said, three things in human life are important. The first is to be kind, the second is to be kind, and the third is to be kind. Being kind is who Shira is. As a friend, she is shown to be supportive, caring, and trustworthy. Shira's love for Camp Massad continued to grow from being a camper to a staff member. She states, Camp Massad is where I'm able to explore my love of arts and make lasting friendships. Shira received the Fernshana Rikus Literary Award and continues to write today. Her English teachers continue to be impressed by her creativity, courage, and growth in her writing. In the fall, Shira will attend the University of Winnipeg and study human rights. Shira is the recipient of the Mel Goldenberg Award for Excellence in Yiddish Language, the Sheldon Ogerman Writing Award, and Life for Recognition. <laughs> Bailey Hurtig. <laughs> Bailey's Gray Academy career began in junior kindergarten. In her ethical will, Bailey shares many memories throughout elementary and high school. She states that last year our grade got very close and I feel that we owe that to our school. If we went to any other school, I'm not sure our whole grade would be friends. Bailey's love for sports and involvement in extracurricular activities is apparent to anyone who knows her. Gymnastics, ultimate frisbee and BBYO to name a few. Her volleyball career, however, was short lived because the ball landed on my head more than in my hands. Bailey loves traveling. She hopes to continue traveling as she gets older. One of her best trips in high school was during P2G where she went to Israel with some of her friends. She recalls her first time camping with Sylvina and Avi, also known as the parents of the trip. It was so special because she slept facing the water next to a beach 
an experience she won't do again, but a memorable one. Bailey had her 17th birthday in Israel, and it made her trip even better. Next year, Bailey plans on attending the University of Winnipeg, where she will focus her studies on business and administration marketing. She received a U of W entrance scholarship. Bailey is a recipient of the Blanaru Family Most Improved Student Award in General Studies, the Class of 87 Award in Memory of Alana Dill, the Philip and Gertrude Wies Vice Award for Holocaust Awareness, the Naomi Polanski Community Leadership Award, Winnipeg Kiddish Palm Springs Scholarship. She has honor roll in general and Judaic studies and receives life for recognition. <clears throat> Yossi Jakobowitz. <laughs> Yossi was born in Cochabamba, Bolivia, and joined the Gray Academy family in 2007 for his junior kindergarten year. He arrived on the first day of school, as Yossi describes it, without a word of English and unable to even ask how to go to the bathroom. Yossi quickly was immersed and made new friends. As he says, it was all smooth sailing from there. One of his cherished memories from elementary school was how invested he and his friends were in their recess football games. Despite a few score debates, it showed Yossi the joy of sports and foreshadowed his athletic participation in high school. Yossi threw himself into athletics, taking an array of sports from badminton, volleyball, and basketball to ultimate frisbee. Yossi thrived with his sports experiences, but what really stood out for him was the fact that at Gray Academy, he could spread his wings. Yossi first placed the lead role in a musical at the age of 12 and continued to find opportunities in the arts as well as athletics. He joined the Neshema Choir and was the school newspaper journalist. He found that leadership roles like BBYO Regional Secretary and Treasurer and Student Council Treasurer allowed him to develop further. Yossi's experience with P2G and his time in Tel Aviv and Jerusalem stand out as the most pivotal, 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 <laughs> That's funny you get stuck on the easiest of words. <laughs> the most pivotal experience in high school for him. Next year, Yossi will be attending the University of Manitoba in the Department of Science. He says, I am passionate about my education and starting the next big step in my life, university. I want to meet new people, grow, try new things, and expand myself. Yossi is the recipient of the Gray Academy Leadership Award, receives excellence in Judaic studies, an honor roll in general studies, and life for recognition. <laughs> Anna Hosebachvili. <laughs> Anna was born in Buenos Aires, Argentina. She came to Gray Academy in 2007 to start kindergarten. Anna's first day was memorable. She arrived as a shy, reserved kid who only knew four students. She made friends with her teachers and a gal and slowly expanded her circle over the next few years. Anna was the unintentional creator of the hat game, which took the playground by storm for years to come. In school, despite going three straight years without winning a single volleyball set, Anna still finds the silver lining. Anna loved playing sports like Ultimate from the very start of her time in high school. I was the only grade seven on a team full of grade eights, remembers Anna, and I was scared. I didn't think I'd fit in with the older students. Anna learned an important lesson about the power of teamwork and support in that experience. Anna loves soccer, volleyball, ultimate, and basketball. She had the opportunity to be the co-captain of the varsity girls volleyball team this year, which allowed her to help run practices and create clear communication lines. Anna worked hard as regional vice president of BBYO and as social chair of student council. Her dedication to these programs was recognized when Anna was awarded the Benai Brith Girls Leadership Award in 2019. Growing up in such a unique environment has brought me to where I am today, explains Anna. Experiences like P2G stand out for her because they not only showed her Israel in a new light, but allowed her to create deep bonds with the students she traveled with. Anna will be attending the Asper School of Business with an emphasis on marketing and communication. Through the university, she received the Benjamin and Sarah Sarner Award, George Finkel Memorial Scholastic Award, and the Israel and Babs Asper Memorial Award. Anna is a recipient of the David Merrick Award, the Heather Stephenson MLA Award, the William Kagan Grade 12 Female Athlete of the Year. She receives excellence in general studies, honor roll in Judaic studies, is receiving student ambassador recognition and LIFA recognition.
<laughs> Dylan Kagan. A gray lifer since junior kindergarten, Dylan has a traumatic memory of kindergarten when Yossi burst into tears because he thought Dylan looked scary. <laughs> Fortunately, Dylan did not stay scary to Yossi or any of his peers. Dylan is noted for his strong commitment to sport. He is dedicated to bringing sport to those less fortunate. He remains committed to fundraising initiatives to provide sport equipment to those who cannot otherwise afford it through a number of fundraising initiatives, all of his own accord. Dylan's impact on younger students is commendable. He coaches youth basketball and routinely reaches out to empower other students to find their voices and passions. Dylan notes in his ethical will that I realized early on in grade seven that I needed to find a passion and I find it through sports. Dylan's dedication to sport at Gray Academy continued through his role on our athletic council every year in high school. He helped organize numerous sporting events and helped to create new tournaments, including a middle years, middle years tournament bringing teams in from Northwestern Ontario and Winnipeg. At the end of every game or practice or any student event, you will always find Dylan staying behind to lend a helping hand. Dylan notes that in the past few months, with the extra time he spent at home, he had time to reflect on his time at Gray Academy and how special it truly was for him. I would like to add that through Gray Away, Dylan remained committed to our younger students with through FaceTime and texting some of our most isolated students. Dylan is attending the University of Manitoba and is going into the Asper School of Business. Outside of school, Dylan has received the McDonald's Leadership Scholarship. Dylan is the recipient of the Gray Academy of Jewish Education Gold Medal, the Nathan Daniel Pollock Memorial Scholarship, Top Marks Canada Scholarship for Citizenship, the William Kagan Grade 12 Male Athlete of the Year, Excellence in General Studies, Honor Roll in Judaic Studies, and Life for Recognition. <laughs> Max Kaplan. Woo! Max joined Gray Academy in junior kindergarten. He recalls that he had a nice teacher that was kind to him. Her name was Maura Jo, and Max liked her because she smiled often and just made him feel comfortable. Those of you that know Max know that he often likes to do his own thing. He isn't a follower doesn't succumb to peer pressure, and is an equal introvert as he is an extrovert, extrovert. Max's friends will say that he has a big heart, is kind to others, and will always have their back. Max's loyalty, loyalty to his friends is admirable. The thing about Max is that he does not always show how he truly, truly feels. He can be quiet and nonchalant, but he is always thinking and working. He chooses when to show his emotions, and when he does, it is truly worth the wait. Max does not judge others, and he never has. He does not gossip or speak poorly about his peers. Max loves playing video games, and although you may not know this, Max is a very talented artist. His favorite high school memories by far were the grade nine Washington trip and the Jewish leadership class, where he states, I went to Dr. Kudin's and he shared a story with us that made us feel so at home and comfortable in his place. I remember thinking how cool it was that we were at our teacher's cottage on a weekend chilling. Max wants to thank all his friends for making high school memorable, as he says, high school wouldn't have been the same without you. Next year, Max will attend the University of Manitoba to study actuarial sciences and then continue his studies in the US. Max receives honor roll in general studies and life of recognition. <clears throat> Rudy Kissel. A gray lifer, Rudy is a critical link in the chain of this year's graduating class. Quiet, but essential. He enjoys hockey and art, is an accomplished pianist, and a computer programmer. Rudy is always doing the unexpected, seeing things differently and putting his own stamp on gray. He is known for his wit and occasionally going missing. Rudy enjoyed participating in basketball and volunteering for many activities. Everyone who needs help know that they can count on Rudy. He remembers the Harry Potter championship in grade four and unique moments like playing charades in Mr. Bedham's grade 10 French class or making music videos with Mr. Posen. Rudy is generous, always ready to help in unassuming ways. He notes in his ethical will that his relationships with his peers will last a lifetime. 
and that each of our unique personalities collided into one another into a crazy yet genuine friendship. Rudy plans to enter engineering at the University of Manitoba and would like to combine his love for hockey and programming by eventually working in game development. Rudy is the recipient of the Morris B. Rose Morantz Award and has received honor roll in both general and Judaic studies and life for recognition. Take my mic. To all of our graduates, who just received their diplomas. If you can all stand, please. Let's give them a round of applause. And at this point, I would ask all of you who have your diplomas to please switch your tassels to the other side as you are officially alumni of Gray Academy. Thank you. And to our graduates who are so patient, Momentarily, in a few minutes, we're going to be focusing on you, so you can have a seat. While there are many thank yous, please turn to your program when you get home. Um, there's not enough time to thank each and every one of our staff members, leadership team who made today possible, and the journey of our graduates, to all of our parents, to the sponsors for our hydration station, and for being able to have this live feed. I want to thank each and every one of you. and ask for your forgiveness that we don't have the time to name you individually. I also want to once again thank Mrs. White. She joined you in grade eight. She spent the last five years with you. And having watched her over the last many months, I can tell you, even in the throes of going virtual for our entire school, our Gray Academy graduates were a priority to her and making sure that you had each and every tradition that we could humanly possible do within our provincial guidelines were made possible. So please join me in thanking our high school principal, Mrs. White. Sorry for making you cry. <laughs> Momentarily, we're gonna do a first part one recessional. Our grads have been given the opportunity to take their grad gowns home today so that they can continue with photos with family. And so we're very grateful to give them that opportunity since we normally would be having a re reception um, as well as many opportunities for photos. So later when you join us live, you will see them throwing their grad caps and we will have our uh, processional. But I think, um, first of all, amazing weather. And I think we might have started a new tradition even if it's going to be possible to be closer um, this time next year. I think it's lovely that we get a chance to sit in front of this building. And even though this, is, this building represents so much, it's going to be uh, 24 years, and then in a year from now, 25 years. This building represents a commitment in Winnipeg, and I think for those of you watching in other cities across Canada or North America, we are so very lucky to have a Jewish education from junior kindergarten all the way up to grade 12. And I think that as we sit in front of this campus, the uniqueness of how close our community is. But I think over the last couple of months, we learned that Gray Academy is not a building and it is not a school. It is really the heart that brings our students together. And when we were virtual, when we were remote, our students remained close. And for that, we are tremendously grateful. So I'm gonna invite Shayla Fink to head to the keyboard. The exit instructions, so um, the graduates who are with their families, when we start the recessional, they know how to exit. You'll have a chance to give them a hug and kiss, those of you who are doing that in the household. They will head back into the building for a five minute break and for hydration. Our staff will also be asked to join them inside to get some hydration as well as our guests who are here from the Federation of the BJE. And we ask you to, what's that? Yes, the staff to the MPR please and our graduates to the wellness. Um, when you exit, if you can just head down this way and we will keep our group separate you will have a chance to get a beautiful wrapped cookie uh, with our Gray Academy logo in honor of our graduates on your way out. Okay, so with that, I would like to um, ask you all to join me in a huge mazel tov for the class of 2020. 
And we're going to cue the music, and then I'm going to cue Josh to get started. So keep those hats on. And thank you all for coming. And hopefully we'll see you live in about five to 10 minutes, because we're going to be sanitizing the chairs in between. So mazel tov, and here we go.